by then this is the start of the next episode for stuff at let's go around australia cooking with and um this week i'm going to make it really easy we are camping after all so let's do some real easy simple tasty dishes a um, little bit of cheat cheating going on in these videos but um as in what we're going to use but they're tasty it's quick and it's easy so the first one we're going to do today is a tuna pasta bake so I'll just pop you down so what you're gonna need to do this dish is two packets of just these sour cream and chives carbonara whichever one you want to pick it really doesn't matter alfredo and you're gonna need a tin of tuna either in oil or in brine but just drain that off doesn't matter you're gonna make this up according to the packet so the packet's got um, water, milk and butter in it. So you're just going to make them up. You want two packets for four people. Okay. You're also going to want a little bit of curry powder, salt, pepper, breadcrumbs and some shredded cheese. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and make up the packets according to the directions and pop that into an oven proof dish that we can either put on the stove and in the oven so I'll do that and I'll come back to you so I've got this ready to go on the stove according to the packet the only difference I'm going to do is a good teaspoon of curry powder in there okay so I'm gonna pop this over on the heat turn it on and just let that do its thing until it's ready and we'll come back to you with what we do with it next. We've got that pasta mix boiling on the stove. So you're just cooking that until that pasta's cooked, until it's thickened a little as well. So it probably needs about another five minutes on there. All right. So about this time, probably put your oven on, because we're going to chuck this in the oven. So preheat to about 180 degrees. Okay. Okay. So I've just taken that pass the mix off the stove. All right. So what we're going to do for that, add that tin of tuna. Okay. And just break that up a bit and stir it evenly through your pass the mix. You don't want massive chunks of tuna. Obviously, if you don't like tuna, you could use chicken in this, if you wanted to, or whatever. But we like tuna. Okay. So we've mixed that pasta through. And then what you want to do, so get your breadcrumbs. This is how we're going to get a really nice cheesy crunchy crust on top. So sprinkle some breadcrumbs on your mix. Like that. And then some cheese. Just like that, and sprinkle some more breadcrumbs over the top of that cheese. This is what makes it get a really nice sort of topping on your pasta. All right, then a bit of salt and pepper as well. So that's my dish there. 
that's going to go into the oven for about 20 minutes okay until that top's nice and golden brown so i've got my weber on and popping that in so we just pop that in the weber on a high heat and we'll leave that for about 20 minutes and we'll come back to it soon so there we are so i will say it browns up much better in the oven so the weber doesn't quite do the top as much as it would in an oven so if you wanted to, you could chuck this under the grill and really brown up that topping. Um, we're not going to worry about it tonight. Couldn't be bothered. So that is my quick and easy tuna pasta bake on the road. Um, so for our main meal this week, although there's a lot of ingredients in it, it is super quick. So we're going to, going to do a meatloaf with a barbecue coffee sort of sauce, but it's more of a barbecue flavour. It does have coffee in it too. So what we've got, 500 grams of minced meat in there. We're going to use up whatever's left in there that tomato paste. A couple of eggs, only because I had it, a little bit of celery. Now in there I've just got some oregano, rosemary, garlic and um, Italian herbs. Half a large onion, about half a cup of diced bacon. About half a cup of diced uh, uh, mushrooms then we've got about a cup of carrots salt pepper you're going to need some sweet chili barbecue tomato sauce some oil some coffee and some brown sugar all right so we'll do this quick mix here so it's easy so just shove all of those ingredients that we just talked about into there Bacon, mushies, we're going to pop a carrot in there, we're going to pop, almost lost my eggs, whatever I've got there, about one, just over one teaspoon of that, tomato paste, two eggs, like that you're going to want a good probably quarter of a cup barbecue sauce and you want the same of tomato okay so salt I do it does look like a bit a lot of salt in there but it is the Himalayan salt so it's not as strong as your normal white salt all right and all you're going to do is mix that all together. I'll come back when I've mixed that. So we've mixed that up. Now, as you can see, it's got a bit of wetness to it. So we want to get rid of that. Turn that off. Got some boiling water going. So into that, just put probably about half a cup of breadcrumbs into that. And that'll just firm it up a little for what we need to do. It's escaping. It's still alive. Alright. So, I don't have any spray all at the moment, so just a bit of that on there. All the pan through the middle. And yep, all you want to do really. I want to get that out. I'm going to make just a big log of mince, pretty much. This is probably going to more than enough for probably six people. And what we're going to do with this is just serve it with mashed potato. I'm not going to show you how to do mashed potato, as I said before. I think most of you are pretty confident with how to do that. Just remember, boy, with potatoes using cold water first and then they won't be as starchy. 
and that's all you want out of that. Wash my hands. Then I'm just going to sprinkle some breadcrumbs over the top. Just like that. Now, I was meant to pre eat in the oven and I forgot. So we'll turn that on now. Might be a good idea. While well, you make the sauce. But anyway, that's going to just go in the oven. You want that to brown over a bit before you add the sauce, okay? Oven, Weber. You know what I mean. All right, I'll come back to you. I'll tidy up. I've got three quarters of a cup of um, water, boiling water. We're adding in about one and a half teaspoons of coffee into that. You would use Worcestershire sauce in this, but I don't have any, unfortunately. So this is going to be my little version of the sauce. A tablespoon of vinegar, white or whatever you've got. It doesn't really matter. We're going to put probably a good tablespoon of soy sauce in there. Two or three. A little bit of salt, not much because of the soy. Pepper. And then we're going to do about half a cup of barbecue sauce on that. And then what you want is a little bit of um, brown sugar, about a tablespoon. And then that's pretty much the sauces. Flavour wise you just don't want it too acidity, too sweet. So that should be alright. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a little bit more water to that to have a bit more sauce when it goes in. And once that um, meatloaf is browned off, we'll just pour this over the top and then leave it for about 40 minutes in the oven. Sorry, I forgot, but just something else I added to this was just about two tablespoons of sweet chilli sauce as well. Okay, that's just something I add to it. Okay. So that started to cook through. So what we're going to do, that sauce we made earlier, we're just going to pour that over the top. What will happen is that sauce actually gets sort of sucked up into that that beef anyway and it should go quite thick we shall see sometimes not but it's not the end of the world if it's not thick it's still tasty and it, even if it's not thick it's really good with mashed potato so we're going to leave that for about half now and that should be all good okay okay so this is ready i've already turned it off um so it's about half an hour in there on the weber um and I've already cut it up, ready to go. And you can see that sauce is quite thick. And tasty. And stained my finger. Mum, the old mum, has made some mashed potato. So we'll dish up. Hi there. So um, for our dessert this week, as I said, all going to be quick and simple so we're just going to do a croissant raspberry white chocolate almost like a bread and butter pudding you would say um, really tasty quick and easy so I'll pop it down again so I think you can see everything there so for this you're going to need some white chocolate chips a couple of eggs for four people we're doing this for Vanilla extract, sometimes I use vanilla bean, but I've been using that a lot lately and it's pretty expensive. Um, you'll need probably 200 mils of cream, a little bit of sugar, you need some croissants. Um, I've just got a three pack, that's going to be plenty for four people. And a punnet of fresh strawberries. You could use frozen as well, I usually use frozen, but I figured the strawberries, the raspberries were on special. So we're going to use fresh. I usually do these in individual serves, like in little cups or something. But um, 
we're going to just do them in one big dish today. So all you're going to do is grease your what you're going to cook it in. Take out your croissants and just break them up randomly. No, it doesn't matter. Just break them up in there. Like that. So that's it. So break them up like that, and you've got them all just break up there. Get rid of your rubbish. Okay. Then to that, your raspberries. Just evenly put your raspberries around like that. You want, you know, everyone to get some raspberries in their dish. So make sure spread out pretty evenly these are really nice raspberries from Audi at the moment nice and fresh so we've just got that okay then our white chocolate it's been in the van and feels a little melty which it is which is a bit of a shame but we shall persevere Put these in the fridge, I think. <laughs> Look at that. Whoopsie. Anyway, doesn't really matter. So just put some white chocolate through that. Did I say cheese before? I don't know. But anyway, you know what I mean. We'll have to remember next time to put these in the fridge, I think. Put in as much or as little as you like when it comes to this. The white chocolate is delicious though when it's cooked. So that probably do. I'll have to deal with them in a sec. So then you've got your white chocolate just through there. Alright, put that aside. Grab a bowl. I'm just going to put a tablespoon of sugar in a bowl. You're going to pop your two eggs in there. Um, 200 mils of cream, as we said, roughly. About a cup, anyway. 200 to 250 mils, doesn't matter. And a good splash of vanilla essence in there. And then just whip that together. Grab that. And then just pour that mixture evenly over your croissants, raspberries and white chocolate. Just um, pat that down a bit, make sure it's all nice. Oh, my goodness, I'm making a mess over here, sorry guys. So, pat that down a bit. And there you have it. Then we're just going to pop this in the oven for probably oh, about 20 minutes, I reckon it is, on about 180. And that'll be ready. I'll show you when that's done. We've got our Weber hot and I'm going to put um, our croissant, raspberry and white chocolate butter pudding, or bread pudding, should I say, eh, whatever, um, into there. I'm going to close the lid, let that in there for about 20 minutes and see how it's going. So this has been in for about 10, maybe 15 minutes 
and that is good to go. Once again, in an oven, the top's going to get a bit more browner. See how that um, white chocolate's starting to brown up? In an oven, you'd get a lot more of that over there. The Weber doesn't really do it as well. And what I've found with the Weber, unfortunately, because you can't have a solid plate this side, you need to try to keep it as close as you can to the fixed side. Otherwise, you do burn a bit of the side, but it's not too bad. Just keep rotating it. Um, every, like, three or four minutes, just come over and turn it one way and do it four sides, if you know what I mean. So, all right, done, dish up. So that is my quick croissant bread and butter pudding with raspberries and white chocolate. Just serving that with a bit of packet mix, custard, doesn't really matter. Or cream, or ice cream, whatever you prefer.